Oh, here we go. I won't be doing that again. That's, uh, I'm going to have to have a sleep. Mid not a midday nap or something. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> mm. That. No petrol. It's Friday. Welcome back to the channel, you uh, 680 people I think we have now. Fantastic news. Probably even make the thousand before Christmas at this rate. I'll be over the moon if that happens. So if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed, hit like, share and subscribe. Sit back and enjoy the ride. And I'll do my best to entertain you every Friday because that's what we do here on Rudgy, a.k.a. The Doctor. So what's going on today, you might ask? Well, <laughs> if I step out of the shade here... It is hotter than a pair of Kylie Minogue's hot pants. And that's not being sexist. And they're called hot pants for a reason, aren't they, I suppose? So, yeah, it is very, very hot. We're in the 40s today. Um, so I'm going to try and go up to uh, Mount Enyus and have a look up there. But I think it's probably going to be shut because of the hot weather. Um, there's a huge fire risk. We've had fires over in uh, Lekithra and uh, Katoyos, uh, places like that. Nothing major as yet, so they've managed to put them out pretty quickly, but yeah, we're uh, on high alert here. And for those of you in the press in the UK, frightening everybody to death, this time of year, July and August, it is always hot. Why do you think it's the middle of the season and everything's expensive? <laughs> Last year it was in the 40s, year before it was in the 40s, it's always the same. The other thing I'd like to say while I'm on my rant, is that uh, the British press are trying to make out that this is unusual and it's all to do with global warming. Well, you know, some of the things that change might be. This is a foreign country. People get up at six and then go to bed again at two o'clock in the afternoon, don't they? And they don't rise again till six. There's a reason for that as well, because it's very hot this time of year. <laughs> so yeah, holiday makers, come on out. It's lovely. <laughs> Put your toe in the water. I've even got my swimming gear on. That's how hot it is. Uh, my swimming gear is on the back of the bike. Uh, the locals will tell you, you never see Rudgy in the water unless it's 40 degrees. <laughs> so there you go. So what have we got behind us? Well, there you go. Argostoli. Beautiful place. We've got the uh, ferry going back to Luxury there. All the super yachts lined up. I haven't been paying attention because I've been that busy editing to tell you who's in because of some pretty expensive bits of kit lying around. Um, I know we've had uh, Enzo Ferrari's son here, uh, that was the beginning of the year. Last year we had uh, Lord Banford's yacht here, that was here for a, a couple of weeks or more actually. Um, so yeah, so uh, there's the uh, famous, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it because you'll only laugh at me, but the famous ancient bridge. And yes, we used to drive across that. I saw somebody talking about that the other day. We used to drive across there. <laughs> Crazy to think we did that, but we did. Um, yeah, you used to have to wait halfway if you saw something coming the other way because you couldn't pass. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Let's go up Mount Enyus and see if we can get into the National Park. If we can't, then we'll go somewhere else. I might even go swimming. If you were to turn right there, that would take you down eventually to the Rebola factory. If you follow that road out, it will take you to uh, the castle. Um, um, you can come in that way. Uh, Google Maps will show you that's the quickest way from where I live, Caravados. But I prefer this road. It's much better for the bike. Um, if you're in a car, you're not going to notice any difference between either of the roads. Um, but look at the camber of that. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether the road's that slippy with a camber like that, does it? And of course you get views like that from here. Having said that, the other route you get views of the vineyards. Depends what you want, I suppose, but uh, look at that. As I said earlier, a bit hazy today. Uh, not sure what we'll see, if it's even open. Anyway, let's crack on.
stop and take in a bit of the view. <laughs> and that's the road we've just come down. Uh, not round that switch back there. And uh, there's some of the vineyards down there. Stop for a minute on the, uh, the part way up now towards the first stage. Television station is just up there. Uh, we'll be going round and up that way. Quite a climb. Let's just turn the lights off. So um, that down there is Augustali for your bearings. And then down there is the Rebola factory and the monastery. And of course, the other side, you've got uh, the airport. Svaranata's over there, that direction, and the airport. And you've got where I live, just round the corner there. But you'll be able to see it a whole lot clearer at the top of the mountain. As you can see, the road's pretty good. Um, back in the day, you were lucky if you got those. Those are crash barriers. <laughs> yeah. That's all we used to get if we were lucky. Sometimes not even that. Anyway, let's crack on. Here we are then, we're at the uh, the Y junction as I'd call it. We've just come up from there. So, <clears throat> to recap, you come up from Agostoli, if you're coming that way, uh, all the way up and on the way down towards uh, Sami, you'll see a sign for Enyus and you turn right at that and then part way up is this junction here so we're going to go uh, up there up onto the mountain and if you go that way that takes you back out to Poros and that direction well it's noticeably cooler up here <laughs> it's still pretty warm but, uh, yeah. so around that direction would be Sammy um, just really stopped to show you one of the views you get and the uh, the road. As you can see, it's a bit like a road in Torquay, isn't it? Really, actually, that's a bit of an insult. It's probably better than a road in Torquay. <laughs> so yeah, if you're driving up here in a hire car, I have no problem at all in coming up here in a hire car. Uh, it's tarmac all the way now. 
Uh, it used to be that you finished this bit of road up by the television station and it was just a track, but now it's a lovely tarmac road. In fact, it's better than this one. This one's been around a very long time, so it's starting to get a bit worn out. And of course we get snow up here, so uh, the varying temperatures probably don't help. Anyway, onward and upward. Well, here we are. Um, here is the uh, entrance to Mount Agnes. Um, if they do close it, as I said earlier, for fires and whatever, uh, a fire risk or whatever, or even snow sometimes, uh, and then that barrier is across. Um, so yeah, so far, as you can see, the road is very good, but it gets much better from now on. <laughs> um, let's go and uh, get this signage for you. As I know some of you like to uh, read the sign. Read the signs, Luke, read the signs. There you go. And for you Greek people, there. And uh, there's your map. One of the more interesting signs I think I've showed you. <laughs> um, there you go, and there's another one just for your information. Now, I tried to see if this place was open today, uh, bearing in mind I live there, and couldn't find a, a, a website or anything for it. So, if there's any Greek people that live on the island that know anything about that, hit the comments section below. A telephone number or a website, anything would be of massive use to people who come on holiday here, because you don't want to drive all the way up there to find that the main part of it's shut. So. <laughs> but I'm whinging now. Right, let's crack on. Comfortable? Here we go. View of Sammy there. As you can see, you can see why I love this road so much. Look at the camber. <laughs> if there's nothing in your way, and you know this very well, you can get a bit of a lickety split on. I'm not, I'm not condoning that sort of behaviour at all. Always drive and ride responsibly. <laughs> but yeah, it's a nice bit of road. Quite refreshing as well. A nice cool breeze as me and uh, the Black Pearl are riding up here. I thought I'd just pull up and show you that um, little sections of this uh, road have got these places where you can pull up and have a picnic. Um, there's all sorts of walks, so I suppose if you're walking you can stop and relax and uh, take some water. 
on your way up. I wouldn't want to walk all the way up, though. I suppose people must do. There you go. Lots of things to see and do in this national park. A lot more than I'm going to show you, to be fair. Well, here we are at the uh, famous car park area where people park up, which is just around the corner there. I brought you around here because I'm going to show you a fantastic view. There's a photograph of me, um, I think it's this one here, about 30 years ago. I'll see if I can put it up. Years ago, I'll see if I can put it up uh, on a trailway by. Um, and we'd ridden up what was a track, which was pretty much like this, all the way up from uh, the television station. And uh, it was the highest point then that you could get to, really. Now, they say that there's a walk to the summit, which I'm going to attempt today. <laughs> dun dun dun! <laughs> um, but from Spillia, where I used to live, um, me and the neighbours have quite often looked up at this mountain and these posts here seem to be the highest point. So I'm not sure about maybe they did it as a tourist attraction, I don't know. I'll report back to you when I've been up there. In the meantime, if you walk around here, it's a bit misty today, uh, which I apologise for, nothing I can do about it. Um, look at that view down there. Yeah, it's a bit hazy because it's uh, it's so hot, it's evaporating the sea, I expect. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it is very hot. Um, it's probably, uh, it's in the 20s up here, unusually. Uh, though you do get a nice cool breeze as you ride up through the, uh, the mountain road. So let's see if we can see the view. This is what I come up here for. Look at that. <laughs> so, just behind the uh, one of the radio masts, I've come up here just to give you a better idea of what's, what the view's like. Like I say, it's a shame, really. It's, uh, it's not very clear today. But you can see... Uh, you can see my village, just make out the three little humps there. The main road into Agastoli. You've got Trapezaki, you can see a little harbour down there, it's Trapezaki. Um, and then you've got where the ferry comes in and out of, just there. And then further up, Vispartia, the beach there. And as I said earlier, the airport, all the way around to um, Spilia, Svalinata. You can see it all from up here. On the way up, if you look through the trees, you can see Sammy. Well, I think it's time we uh, took a bit of a hike. <laughs> That's the bit that I'm not looking forward to. You might enjoy it. But, uh, there's Lordas down there. Yeah, if you don't do the walk, um, you can drive up to this bit. Uh, if you don't do the walk, this bit's well worth coming and looking at. I mean, look at that. That's Lord Ass down there. You can see ever so clear. Fantastic. There's Rabbit Island out on the back there. You can make that out. You can just about make out Sikinthos. I'm doubting you'll see the mainland. You might, might see it from the summit. Anyway, let's start walking. I'll get back to you. 
Yeah, as you can see, they've uh, done something with the road down to this bit, so you can now drive down there. The bucket will be thrilled about that. Let's go have a look at this signage here. Well, they've been busy, they put a new bench in. <laughs> this bench here used to be just here. And uh, I famously fell asleep on it about 20 odd years ago now in the sun. So that one's a bit further back, that's a bit safer, I reckon. <laughs> so there's the edge of uh, Lord Ass there. I think you can make a Telios out from here actually. Scala. And poor us will be around the corner there. That's one of the famous viewpoints. Uh, no, that's it. Tell you that now, this ain't it. And here's the thing, I've just ridden down here, uh, which I wouldn't advise anybody to bring a hire car down. Um, the road is extremely rough. <laughs> but uh, the walk down to the summit, um, I thought I'd make the most of They've uh, put a bit, a bit of new gravel in, I thought I'd make the most of it. Then I thought, curiosity got the better of me. I thought, I wonder where this road goes. Well, it looks like it's taking me back off the mountain in the direction of uh, Poros. I don't know. I'll have to ask uh, Mackis, he'll know. But look at that view. And Sammy down there. You see uh, EF Amir just around the corner there. And a couple of the beaches I went to, Sophia and places like that, that I went to a week or two ago. Yeah, so uh, what a beautiful place. Like I say, if you're into walking, which I'm not, <laughs> It's, uh, like I say, it's a national park and it's a lovely place to visit and just wander around. Um, there are all sorts of walks. If you look at some of the signage on the way up the hill, it tells you all about those. Let's crack on. All right, so here we are at the uh, long walk up to the summit. They say it's 10 minutes walk from the car park. It's not. Um, I'll just come down on Nicky. It took us about 10 minutes on the bike. <laughs> So, let's uh, see what sort of walk this is. I've brought some water. And uh, I'm going to try and make the summit. Yeah, if you don't walk well, you're going to have to scrap this one, I'm afraid. I've seen people on Facebook say, well, I've had new knees. And I did it. <laughs> well, I mean, look. Well, been walking now for three months, two weeks, three days, and 18 hours, 16 minutes. Haven't seen a soul run out provisions. The Sherpa and the donkey went back to civilization. Uh, if you don't see me again, don't say I didn't warn you. Whew. Well, I'll join you now on Cardiac Hill. Yeah, I've had to have a sit down. It's pretty steep. Uh, so I don't believe all you read on Facebook. 
Um, yeah, well, don't even know as we're halfway up yet. Anyway, I'm going to sit and have some water and then continue the journey. Well, I've just left the base camp three. Uh, we're into the fourth month now uh, of walking to the summit of Enyus, which is the tallest of the uh, Ionian island mountains. Yeah, we're trying to get up here, you can see why. <sighs> On a serious note, mosquitoes. Yeah, in the woods. Yeah, so I'm going to be uh, eating alive because uh, I haven't got a shirt or anything. Just a little tip from the ridge. But I think we're inside of it. Right. Right, so it's uh, five months since I set out on this epic adventure. The Sherpas left me to it, took the donkey back to uh, base camp one. But I found some uh, Polish people. Yeah. My Polish friends have been here three months because they can't stand the walk back. <laughs> <laughs> what are your names? Egosia and Bartek. Bartek. Ah, I'm never going to be able to pronounce that, am I? <laughs> Sounds very nice, though. In English, Margaret. Margaret? Yeah. Oh, that's my mum's name. Oh, nice. Ah, yeah, yeah, she's 92. Mm. Yeah, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 32. 30, 32? Yeah, three and two. <laughs> she only looks like she's five. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it must be the water they drink in Poland. I'm going there. So, yeah, what do you think of Catalonia? So beautiful. Yeah. yeah, very nice place. <laughs> and what do you think of the summit? Uh, oh, so nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a walk though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If you've been watching uh, social media and you see the guy who says it's ten minutes walk from the car park, it's not. I yeah. passed these guys on my bike, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it took me ten minutes. And as far as the summit goes, if I put the camera level with the stone they've got, I was right. The radio masts are higher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, is that a bit of tourism, do you think? Anyway, it's all very nice and you get a fantastic view. It's a pity that uh, we've got the sea mist because you can't really see Zikinthos. Uh, you can see Sammy down there, uh, yeah, for Mia, and round to Fascado, just about make out Ithaca. Um, poor us will be over the back there. And I would imagine on a clear day you can probably see the mainland. But it's not clear today. But anyway, yeah. From me and my Polish friends who've been hiking for at least two years to get here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in a minute. And they will see me in a few days when they get home and watch me, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> like I say, watch out for the mosquitoes in the, uh, in the forest of uh, many cardiac arrests. Because they are fierce. <laughs> Me and my Polish friends were just deciding whether we should leave a Polish and an English flag on the summit because we've conquered it. <laughs> As she pointed out, Margaret, uh, in English her name is. As Margaret pointed out, she doesn't have one and neither do I, so uh, we're leaving the Greek one that's there. <laughs> yeah, anyway, what a beautiful day to be alive. There's a ferry coming from the mainland over there. So I guess uh, I'd better start the long walk back down. It's got to be getting on because that's the last ferry back to Zakynthos. From Posada. So there you go. The summit of Mount Enyus. One of the, it's the highest mountain in the Ionian Islands and one of the highest mountains in Europe apparently and a national park. Google it, it's, uh, it's full of surprises. Keep your reading for hours. <sighs> oh, here we go, I won't be doing that again. That's, uh, I'm gonna have to have a sleep. Mid not a midday nap or something. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> mm. Well, um, <clears throat> how can I put this? In the best traditions of uh, the Rudge household, when the roads were like this, 
to get up here and it took you a whole day to get here I came up on a TW200 with the ex-wife and uh, when we got back on to go back the bike wouldn't start I thought what's up with that no petrol yeah so we rolled all the way down a track to the main road and then rolled all the way down into the first petrol station as you get into Agasoli and filled up <laughs> and I swore I'd never do it again uh, yeah well see we're facing uphill so um, I can guarantee on the level that's only one bar of fuel but the light won't be flashing so we're all right aren't we <laughs> Uh, what an epic day. Uh, let's hope my Polish friends got home all right. Yeah. Good old Polish people. Incidentally, if you're going to come up here on a bike and you were thinking of giving it some stick, they've ruined the road. <laughs> so that rut there, well, it's just in the wrong place quite a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, unless you're extremely fit, I don't suggest you go up there. I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> I mean, I, we all joke about my level of fitness, but I'm quite a fit guy. You know, um, I have problems with my back and my leg uh, on and off because I uh, broke both of them. <laughs> Falling off the boat, not on a bike accident. <laughs> the boat was in a yard and I fell 15 foot to the ground. Anyway, that's another story. Um, but yeah, on, on good days, I can walk quite well. That I found that a struggle. I stopped three times. The Polish guys, hello, Margaret and your boyfriend, um, they were a lot younger than me, and I think they stopped three times on the way up. So yeah, it's not an easy climb. So if you don't walk well, don't entertain it. Certainly don't drive the car further than the car park because the road is extremely rough. Um, so unless it's your car, and you, or you want to pay for the, the damaged tyres and that, don't take the car. Anyway, as far as the National Park and Mount Ennius is concerned, uh, yeah, Google it, because if you're into hiking and stuff like that, it's a fantastic place. It is much cooler up there, um, you know, especially on a, at the moment in July and August. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, it traditionally gets extremely hot here in Greece, uh, in the 40s. Uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was, I was working on a, a boat called Balboa Charter Yacht, and we were recording 46 the one day uh, out there so it does get pretty hot here july and august that's nothing really that unusual though the, for some reason the press seem to be making out that it is there's probably something else going on i'm not aware of so you know i'm not uh, i'm not here to be a political channel anyway that's this week's video uh, i'm now going to chuck in a little bit about i went to a posh restaurant it's an actual favorite of the buckets she likes to uh, to go to these posh places, you know, black tie and all that. So I thought I'd throw that in. If you visited the Coffee and PayPal page this week, thanks ever so much for doing that. It really is a big, big help to me. Um, and it helps me do these videos because, you know, it pays for the fuel and stuff like that. Um, if you're subscribed on the YouTube channel, thank you ever so much for doing that as well. Because that also, that also helps. Hit like, share. And subscribe sit back and enjoy the ride and what am i doing andy i'm looking about ain't i catch you guys next friday thanks for watching
Right, well, we uh, managed to make it to the petrol station with the light flashing. <laughs> Didn't run out, you'll be happy to know. And I decided uh, it's not in budget this week, I spent up. And as you know, I'm on a pretty tight budget. I've decided to come to the uh, bus station to get myself a Euros. I don't fancy cooking tonight. Uh, also, I'm going to give the young lad that works here a drink because last time I was here, as you know, I sometimes leave the uh, ignition on on Nicky. It's very easily done. The key doesn't fit properly. And sometimes you pull the key out, the ignition's still on. And of course, the lights are on. So when I was here last time, I came out to a flat battery. He had told me the lights were on, but of course, I'd been on too long by that point. So he ha helped me start the bike. He gave me a push around the car park. <laughs> so fair play to him. So if you were wondering, that is the road into uh, Argostoli. The lagoon is over there. And that's the uh, coffee shop that people get confused with. This here is the coach station. And if you sit down in there, they will come and bring you a Euros. They also have a takeaway, which is just around the other side of those fridges in front of that bus that you can see. So I'm now gonna go and get uh, something long and cool to drink. And um, I might have a Sivalaki because they do meals and all sorts here. I'm gonna ask for a menu, see what we got. Anyway, as you can see, I've turned the lights off. Yes. Yes. We'll have a table here. So there you go, you don't just have to have a Euros. Um, I've had the mixed platter thing. Nine euros, I think it is, something like that. Looks bloody fantastic. Might take me a while to eat it though. Well, I can highly recommend the platter, but I think you're better off sharing it. <laughs> I mean, I'm quite a big lad, I can eat, as beer grills will uh, bear testament. Um, but there was a lot there. Um, the one thing I would say about that is if you're curious as to what they actually do here and uh, you fancy something different, have the platter because everything they do is on there. There's sausage, there was a chop, um, gyros, uh, chips, who name it, it was all on there. It was a fantastic meal. Bearing in mind it is Greek fast food <laughs> and the staff are fantastic too. So there you go. That is the, uh, the coach station for your gyros. All we've got to do now is make sure the bike starts. <laughs> what are you doing, Andy? I'm farting a bike, Jenny. <laughs> oh, what are you doing, Andy? Mucking a bike. <laughs>